Hey, my name is Jesus Castello, and in this video, you're going to learn about Ruby network programming. After you're done watching this video, you're going to understand how you can write your own servers, so you can start accepting connections from your Ruby program, and also you're going to learn how to write your own clients, so you can communicate with other servers. First thing you need to do is to require the shortcut library. So let's require shortcut. And then we need to create a TCP server. So let's do server equals TCP server dot new localhost is where we want to listen. And then we need the port where we want to listen. So let's do 3000. Now, when I run this program, the program exits immediately because it's not ready for listening yet. It's not listening for new connections. But when I do server.accept, now it's accepting connections. So you can see the program didn't end, it's still running. And we can verify this using the netstat command. Using netstat, we can find listening programs. In other words, we can find our open ports. We can find which programs are listening on which ports. And this is a very useful command, as you can see. We have Postgres over here, and this is our Ruby program, or Ruby server, as you can see, it's coming from Ruby, and it's the port 3000. So that confirms that the port is open and we are accepting connections. Now, how can we actually connect to the server? Well, there is a tool, it's called Netcat. And using this tool, we can connect. We need the local host, that's the address of the server. Then we need the port. Connection to local host succeeded. So that's good. Now we can keep working on our server and actually print some kind of message, right? Because right now the only thing we're doing is accepting connections, but we are not doing anything with the connection. So we can get the client object. This gives you a client shortcut and that's how you communicate with the client. You, that's how you communicate with the other computer that's connecting to you, to your server. So you can do two things. You can either write to the socket, you can either send information, or you can read information. So let's start by sending something. Client.write, hello there. That we print this message to everybody that connects to our server. And let's try this. And there it is. Hello there. That's our message. And I'll notice that whenever we disconnect, the program ends. And you can fix that with a loop. You can simply add a loop right there. And now we, we keep listening when we disconnect. As you can see here, we can connect, then disconnect with Control C, and we can connect again because it keeps listening. Now, how do we read data from the client? You can do that using the Client read. So we can do client read, and we need the number of bytes that we want to read. So let's try 124 is pretty standard amount to do, and we can print whatever that is. 
So let's try this. One, two, three. Now let's close the connection. And it's buffering right now. So we can see the output because it's in some kind of buffer. So we need to stop. And there it is. So now I have disabled the output buffer so we can see the output uh, as it's happening without having to end the program. Let's write a echo server. An echo server is when I type something, the server replies with whatever I type in. So it's like a copy, it's echoing whatever I type. Let's do that. Let me remove that. Let's save whatever we read from the client. And this time let's use gets to just read one line. And we can write back whatever the use the user gave us. Like that. So let me stop the program and run it. And let's try this. One, two, three, one, two, three. And it only happens, it only happens once because there is no, the loop is only for the gets. I mean, it's only for the accepting state, right? So what we can do now is to do another loop until client end of file. So that means in the, until the client until the client disconnects, then we keep reading and we keep echoing, right? So I can do one, two, three, and everything there keeps uh, being echoed back to me. And then I can do Control C to end the connection and do that again, right? So that's an echo server. As you can see, works, and that's how you can create your own servers. Now let's create the client side of this, so we don't need to use this tool to connect. We can use our own client. To do this, let's also require shortcut. And now instead of a server, we will need a TCP shortcut.now localhost and then the port now since I can only run one one thing at a time inside Atom what I'm going to do is to open another tab and inside this tab I'm going to run the server here and then let's run the client here and we can do shocket.read. Remember, we have the echo server, so we can write something. I hello. Then we can read that and we can end the connection. Let's just read one line. We write to the shocket, which is the, the server that we're connected on. And then we read one line using get and we end the connection. And what we get back from the server is hello. Why? Because it's an echo server, so whatever we put in there, we get back, right? That's how you create a client and work with the client. You can see it's the same methods, it's write, get, read. And on the server side, it's also gets right. The difference is that we are accepting connections. In the client side, you don't need to accept a connection, right? But on the server side, you accept the connection and then you can do something with it. You can communicate with the whoever is on the other side. So that's the basics of Network programming in Ruby. Hope you found this useful. If you did, please give me a like so I know that you like this video.
And if you want to keep learning, visit my website, rubyguides.com and subscribe to the newsletter. So I can send you some of my best content to help you improve your Ruby skills. Thanks all for watching. See you in the next video.